the Niners don't have many weaknesses. A lot of people think they have the best roster in the league. Uh, if they had one weakness, it would probably be their offensive line. Um, they have a great left tackle, but they don't really invest in the other positions very much. Uh, and yet they still make it to NFC Championship games fairly regularly. So how important, how pressing are their issues on the offensive line? Well, you know, it's hard. I mean, I look at the offensive lines that we had at the Raiders. And you got Shell, you got Upshaw, you got Dalby, you got Mosbar, you got Mickey Marvin, uh, Henry Lawrence, uh, you got some quality players. Um, and you had some great running backs. Nowadays, it's hard with the salary cap to be able to have a multitude of our Raider ball clubs that had 12 and 13 and 14 Hall of Famers on the same rosters and seven or eight of them playing in multiple Super Bowls and winning them all in the 80s and 80 against the Eagles and against the Redskins. And yeah, you know, some guys who played in three Super Bowls and won three in the 76 game against the Vikings, as well as the Eagles and, you know, the, uh, I hate to say Red I can't say yeah. commander, my God. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you can't do that today. The dynasties of the, are kind of been capped and restricted because of the salary cap. But you've got to be able to have, you know, some players who can be constant quality performers for you. And somewhere along the line, you know, it, you've got to have an offensive lineman. I look at the Niners offense and you, you look at the left tackle, you know, someone's going to be his backup pretty soon because he's about at the end of his career. You know, how many more years does he want to play or can he play? How many games does he miss a year to begin with? And what success do the Niners have when he's not playing? Not, not a lot. They're three and six when he's out in the last four years. Now, see, that's another thing that tells you something. I got to say, when Trent Williams is not, how many games did he miss? He misses, what, four or five games a year, probably? Mm, two or three, but that could increase as he gets older. He's been giving me 36 in a month. Okay, yeah. And so I've got to think about when he's not healthy, when he needs a break, he needs a blow, you know, who am I putting in at left tackle? How's that impacting our performance? How's it impacting our protection? What runs? You notice if I look at the Niner offense, they have a certain run philosophy that they have to the left, and they have a certain run philosophy they have to the right. Explain that. And predicated upon the personnel. You know, I look at their right side of their line. They are more of a the outside zone concept of the inside zone where they have a button run philosophy. We're going to, you know, and you look at Kittle at the point or use check at the point where they just button run and run their feet. And then, you know, once in a while, you'll see a button turn. You'll see a button cut the backside's playing button wall. But when I'm running to the left with the Niners, they're running the leads and uh, more physical style of run. Makes sense. Where, Cause right, they got Aaron Banks and Trent Williams over there. Yeah. And on yeah. the other side, they're using more foot speed and stretch concepts because they don't have the power to knock you off the ball, which the left side of the line has. So they have to complement what can those linemen do on the left side and what can those linemen do on the right side. But now they've got to be able to, you know, you're not going to find five linemen, all of whom can do the same thing. So you've got to say, okay, what philosophy do I have that fits with what we can do on the right side of our line? And what philosophy can I have that fits with what our left side of our line can do? And then you've got to find players who fit those uh, mindsets and those philosophies that you have offensively. You mentioned that the reality of modern NFL with the salary cap is you just can't load up the way that you could in the 80s that the Raiders did, that the 49ers did. Um, so you sort of have to pick a position group where you're going to maybe try to save a little bit of money. And the question is, should that position be offensive line? It seems to me that the Chiefs don't skimp on the offensive line. They lost that Super Bowl, and they've been pretty invested in that position group since. Meanwhile, they traded Tyreek Hill. While the Niners, I mean, Chris Forster just the other day said, we like to invest in players who touch the football. So... You know, they're trying to keep Brandon Ayuk. They kept Debo Samuel, and uh, they're, they start Colton McKivitz. Uh, do you agree with the 49ers' philosophy, or are you more like Jim Harbaugh, who sees the offensive line as a weapon in and of itself? Okay. You can have all these great weapons on the outside, the Ayuks, the Debos, the Kittles, and all that, 
But if you can't protect and afford the quarterback enough time to get the ball to those guys, what's the worth of having all that talent on the outside and you can't get the ball to him because the quarterback's tits to the sky and, you know, he's right on his back. Or the ball has to come out in a second and a half. Correct. 